Hello, hello everybody, this is Kirsha here. Now, whenever I last left off, Deku had just beaten All Might with Bakugo's help. Now, let's see. Let us open on the bus. People are talking more about their quirks, and everyone else is doing that. Momo is talking about how her quirk, she's had trouble with it, but Deku helped her. And that they were training and actually talking with each other a lot during the two weeks, during the two week gap before the sports festival. People are asking what did they do for those two weeks, and she would explain that, oh, they just were at her house, they were eating a lot of food, they were doing some physical training, and they even sat down, played some games, and watched some old school movies. Now, as soon as people would have done that, a lot of the, well, Todoroki would have just said that, that sounds, that sounds, like, fun. Well, all the other guys are saying that, Todoroki, don't dance, dance around that, that clearly sounds like a date. As people, well, a lot of the girls would be looking at her, and she would actually start blushing. As Deku is kind of confused, saying that it was really just training. Right? Which is whenever everyone would just tell them that that was clearly like, it's clearly like a date. You guys may have just been hanging out, but it looks like a date. Now, this is whenever Aizawa would comment that it's enough of their BS and they need to get off the bus. As soon as they would get off of the bus, Momo is actually thinking about this now. That was basically a date, so does that make them a couple? Or what was that? What about that? Because they've never kissed before. Now, the reason why Momo is having these emotions and feelings so late into this what if, is because her character is very inquisitive, and she's more if it doesn't bother her, she doesn't care, but if it genuinely grabs her interest, or just is annoying, she might act on those. And now uh, she's thinking about it, Deku's now catching her interest. So, it's a bit more in line with her character. And now she's thinking about this. As soon as she would turn to Deku and actually try and ask him a question, this is whenever the pussycat with the earth manipulation quirk would immediately cause the landslide. Which, whenever they're falling, Momo would have immediately gone to try and make something, and she would somewhat make a glider. Or, she would make a glider and she would glide down. As Deku would immediately just turn into a giant blanket and just grab everyone in 1A. Now, as soon as that happened, people are talking and they're asking what's happened, or what happened. This is where the Pussycats would say that they have two hours to get across this entire area. Otherwise, they are going to miss lunch or dinner. And they know about that one kid with fat dumb squirk. So they expect him to do better. Now then, this is whenever Momo would immediately just try and see if everyone's okay and whenever she gets to Deku. Deku's perfectly fine. Now, as soon as that happened, Bakugo is actually asking what should they do, and a lot of people would immediately just look at Deku, because Bakugo and Momo are looking at Deku, and they're essentially two of the strongest people in class, besides Todoroki, and hmm, Ibarra and Shinsha. Because Sinsho can just shut down every single villain with a conversation. Now then, as soon as this happens, Deku's immediately trying to think, and he would just come up with an idea. 
He tells Bakugo to hit him as hard as possible and to keep doing that, along with Kirishima. They're asking if this is a good idea, and Deku would immediately just say, trust me. Now, as soon as this happened, Deku, he would just immediately be being hit by 65% of one for all, and Kirishima is just hardening up as much as possible, just punching him over and over again. Now, because of that, people are watching as Deku's essentially turned into his like, giant glowing mode, and he would actually cock his arm back, actually basically throwing about a thousand percent of one for all in a single direction, which would obliterate the entirety of the area in front of them. Now, the pussycat that essentially has the radius quirk, she's trying to read out the area as she would immediately just nearly jump up out of her seat in the car and hit her head. People are asking what she's, what she's doing as they would immediately hear the sound. They would look over and they would see the entire forest got basically obliterated. Most of it, at least. Anyways. After that, Deku would have fallen over and landed on his ass. Which is one of the people would ask if he's okay, and he would ask them if they can get his bag for him. Which, they would grab it for him, and he would immediately pull out his black box. People are asking what's in there, as he would open it and reveal a snack. People are asking why does he even have that, and he would explain that Fakum gave him that, gave him an idea. Essentially, if my quirk allows me, to, makes me burn to my body fat, it's good good idea to have at least something on hand to actually help me not only stay, not only to not be hungry, but to also keep myself from essentially malnourishment after overusing my quirk. Which he would start eating as they would all just start running. Now, after this. This is whenever everyone would get there, and they're actually asking who threw that punch. As Deku would immediately raise their hand, his hand. Everyone's confused because they're asking who that kid is, and he would I mean they would immediately realize that it's that giant kid. As Deku would explain that his quirk is exactly kind of is almost exactly like Fat Gums. This is another one of the similarities. Which now it intrigues them more. So, after this, they would then do the training where <coughs> Ow. where they would have Bakugo and Kirishima actually punching Deku, and Deku is just being overloaded. And he's also been told to only eat enough to get one layer. So he's actually just... He looks like a canon version of Deku, but just around Ida's height. And with a lot more muscle packed onto him. Since all his muscles being protected by layers upon layers of fat. So just the layers of armor. Now, because of that, he has actually been able to work on improving his quirk. Which basically means that the less fat he has in, on his body, the more it can store up. So the, the way he's trying to do it is he's trying to do it on like fat gum. So he's trying to make his quirk more efficient by being able to hold more kinetic energy in a smaller package. Essentially like the way how if you were to put a stick of dynamite in, or put enough, to, put enough gum powder in a stick of dynamite, it makes an explosion. But if you were to tie, if you were to tie like six or seven in a bundle, it can still be very small. But you can still light it and throw it, and it would just be a bigger explosion. So he's just trying to do something like that. Now, Momo's quirk training is actually very similar to Canon, but she is actually just whenever she is doing her training, she isn't just making like little doll. She's actually trying to make various complex things. 
and we would get a very big improvement on her quirk. They were actually told that Momo is actually starting to be able to create liquids, but it's just more and more complex than they think. So they would have told her if she can try creating olive oil or water, which she would actually successfully be able to create water. But it's just, it's kind of weird. Because they think that it may have taken hydration from her body, but it didn't. It just took the fat cells. And this is whenever she'd actually create water, olive oil, and let's say she's able to create gasoline. Or at least something like with oil. Now, yeah, let's say gasoline. Anyways, she's able to create something like gasoline, but it's a bit more... It's a bit more like... It has the explosive power that Bakugo's sweat has, so it's more nitroglycerin than... It's basically nitroglycerin, the nitroglycerin gasoline. Try saying that one word after another. It's not very easy. Oh, man. That was a tongue twister. Anyways, Deku would have actually been able to improve his quirk, so he's actually not fat. Now... He's not, he's not, blech, never mind. He's more like burly, so he has like that burly muscle. So people are actually sitting down and talking with him. And they're actually asking Deku like, if he's always been like this. He would just say, yeah, it's just that he always has to eat and able to manage his quirk very well, very better. Blech, very better is not a word. A lot better. He just... He's not used to always being like this. He's used to just being able to eat and it automatically going back to normal. So, people would then start talking. And Momo was actually sitting next to Deku. So, people would actually start talking about this to being a, a couple. Which would immediately just make them start blushing as they would just say, No, no, they're not a couple. As Kaminari would immediately just jump up saying that they would probably be a very good couple. They're two of the strongest kids in 1A, and it's weird, because you two always seem to mimic each other's mannerisms. Which, Jiro would immediately look puzzled, saying, how the fuck does he know how to say that word? And everyone just start laughing. Now, the, why did I have Kaminari say mannerisms? Because he probably doesn't know what that word means. Double thumbs up, everyone. Now, after this, this is whenever everyone will be going for the test of courage. Deku and Momo, they were actually sent through. And the reason why they were sent through is because, just like in similar to canon, they, well, not similar to canon, but I'm pretty sure during season 4 there might be a filler arc where it's like the girls in class 1A and the guys in class 1A probably trying to set Deku and Ochako on a date. That might happen in the anime, because it happened at the shopping mall. Now then, they would do this, and Deku and Momo, they're walking through. They would get scared, and Momo would eventually essentially grab Deku's hand and actually walk through with him. And as she would actually talk to Deku, this is whenever she would actually, she was about to confess her feelings for him, but he got attacked by a villain. What happened was, Toga actually came out of the woods and tried to attack these two. As that happened, she would have tried to stab Deku with a knife, and Deku would have immediately just grip onto it with his body fat and just snap it in half. Now, how was he able to snap it in half? He can manipulate it so he can just move it a certain way, breaking the blade. Now, after that, Toga's kind of booed. Well, she's kind of... Aw, that's no fun. As Deku would knock her out. By charging up kinetic energy in his finger, or at least the kinetic energy he stored up from the day, and actually flicking her on the nose. Knocking her out, because I know if you headbutt someone by forcing your forehead into their nose, that's actually how you're supposed to do it. Now, 
After this, Deku would immediately just run back to camp with Momo, and they're saying that there's villains here, they're under attack, as they would see the fire. Now, after this, this is whenever Deku would ask where, or where is that kid, or where is Koda, because Bakko would probably be the one who would try to walk up to him. It's just, he's a bit more intimidating, and he would not be punched in the nuts. Now then, let's see. Deku and... Deku and that tele telepathic pussycat member, they would be... She'd be talking to him, and she'd say that she doesn't know where he is, he still might be in the forest. Deku would run into the forest, and he's actually bouncing around, building up more energy, and actually trying to look for him. Which, the forest is actually a very good area for him to be at, so he's just bouncing off of the trees over and over again. Now, <sighs> after this, this is whenever Deku would eventually find or hear Koda on a cliff talking to himself. He would bounce up there, and he would actually land by Koda. As he would ask Koda what he's doing here, and that he ne they need to go back to camp, because the villains are attacking. So, Koda would essentially just tell Deku okay, and they would start walking. Or start running. I don't know why they would be walking. As they're running, Deku would immediately be cut off by Muscular, jumping in front of them. No, oh, man. Yeah. No, then. Mostly they would say that the fun's just beginning, and that they're here for that brainwashing kid, Ibarra, and Todoroki. Deku would immediately say that he's not going to let them, him get to them, as he would essentially just bring his arm out, actually putting it in front of Koda. Musky would say that, oh, he thinks he knows that kid, as, or he says that it doesn't matter, he's still going to kill him and that kid. As he would actually take off his mask, revealing that it's actually the man who killed his parents. Koda would start crying, and he would say that that's the man who did it. As he would say that, so your parents, that this that brat is the kid of those two who took his eye. Well, he's going to make him pay, as he would immediately charge for Deku. Deku would have immediately gotten in front of Koda, actually taking the shock. And as soon as Muscular actually punched him, Deku actually just gone and slapped him back with the energy. As he's now trying to do a different fighting method than Fat Gum. Now, after this, this is one of Fat Gum, not Fat Gum, must be able to gotten back up saying that, ah, boy, that boy kid that actually hit me pretty hard. But let's see what you can do. As he would just build up more muscle and charge toward Deku. Now, Deku's essentially standing there with his hands up, actually taking the punches. And anytime his body would start glowing, he would just immediately redirect the force at Muscular with his own punch. Which would actually impress Muscular. Because it's not every day you find an opponent that can not only take a punch, but can actually deal it back to you. So he's actually having quite a bit of fun. Now, Deku would essentially be holding off Muscular, and he would tell Koda that he needs to run. Or try and get as far away as he can. And Muscular would immediately try and chase down Koda as Deku would have moved in front of him and actually knee him in the face, actually breaking his nose and sending him flying into the mountain. Now, after the landslide, this is when Muscular would get back up and he's actually telling Deku that he's not joking around anymore, as he would actually get bigger and bigger and grow in size. Now, this is whenever he would charge at Deku, and Deku would actually put his hands up again, but as soon as he does that, Muscu would have actually just sent him flying with a punch. Now, why did he send him flying? Deku may have shock, shock absorption, but... Yeah, that doesn't matter whenever a person can literally just rip you through the ground and send you flying. Even that, Muscu could just... No, well, he could just knock him up into the air with an uppercut. Now, 
after this, Deku would have actually started jumping back to the battle area as he finds Busker still trying to chase down Koda. And he's actually in the forest. As soon as Deku would have seen this, he would have merely just turned into his dodgeball mode. And he's using his stored energy to actually jump through the, the trees and actually would catch up the muscular. As he would immediately do his fireball move or cannon move and hit muscular in the back. This would have actually interrupted him and he would get very mad. Now, muscular would begin throwing as many of his punches as he can at Deku, which would actually power Deku to a point he has not found yet. His body is glowing, his eyes are glowing, and every single part of his body, including his hair, is actually glowing. Now, his hair is actually going with so much energy that it's somewhat standing up on end. Like, it's being charged with electricity. Insert Dragon Roll reference here. Anyways. After this happens, Muscular is telling Deku that if he doesn't care about that power-up, it won't mean anything. As he would actually grab Deku and immediately just punch him in the gut, sending him flying into the air. As soon as he did that, Deku would have immediately just flattened out his body, slowing himself down, and immediately just will basically create wings, or he would flying squirrel this and just like flap his arms, and he would immediately be over muscular as he would immediately do his cannonball move, or his atomic bomb. As he'd be coming down at Muscular, and Muscular just laughing at him. Deku would immediately just do this move, and as soon as he does it, Muscular would actually come up with a punch. As soon as his fist made contact with Deku, the blast went off. Actually, not killing Muscular, but it would have just taken off his arm, and actually given him third degree burns. Now, because of that, twice, or the no moves in the vi or Ugh. Some of the Nomus would have been destroyed. Twice, I believe he was there, but I don't think he was there. Actually, let's I didn't see him. A lot of the villains, like Magnetism and the Lizard Guy, they would actually have to leave because they were told to retreat. Mr. Compress, I want to say he would not be able to get escape because Deku essentially destroyed half the forest when they got there. And this blast would probably destroy three-fourths of the forest. Basically leaving like 20% of it left. Now, this is whenever Deku, he would have actually gotten up. He's exhausted and he can barely stand on his legs. Saying now he knows why Fat Gum says that that's not easy to do. Or how that nearly killed him. Which is whenever Deku he would immediately be compressed into a ball. He is very shocked and confused as Mr. Compress would just hold him up in the air, saying that he's quite a fine specimen and he and their boss would really like to inspect him. Because he's such a fine jewel. A rarity, in fact. Now, as soon as that happened, Bakugo would have actually saw this happen, because he would have been running over to the explosion, along with Momo and a couple of teachers, as they would arrive and they would have saw this. Bakugo would immediately do his full burst, or his full body, what did they call it? Hmm. Whatever I called it, he would do that. Oh, I need to look that back, or look back at that. He would do that and he'd actually charge at Mr. Compress. Mr. Compress would have actually been dodging him, and he's doing that, as Momo would create a sack of blue marbles, and basically a paintball gun. She's trying to shoot these at Mr. Compress and doing all that, but whenever that doesn't work, because she's just trying to scatter about a lot of marbles and get Mr. Compress to drop them, so he doesn't know which one's Deku. That wouldn't work, so she would just create grenade launchers and flamethrowers. She'd create a shoulder-mounted grenade launcher, or a shoulder-mounted flamethrower, and she has an M32 in her hand. Now, she'd actually be firing these off in the area they're at, 
and she's actually firing the grenade launcher. Bakugo is actually pretty impressed, as they would eventually be able to get Deku back from Mr. Compress. Now, they would have actually taken down Mr. Compress, and... Not... Well, not kill him, but... Let's say he has to go to the hospital, because they think he has bullet wounds. Which, he does not. But he does have a broken arm, and a broken face. Which, they would be really weirded out, because they don't know how to get Deku back to normal. As Baku would say that it's very weird, but they probably just have to knock him out. As Momo would immediately create a bat and just bash Mr. Compress in the face. Which, everyone doesn't know whether to question or just cheer her on. As Mr. Compress would hit the ground, Deku would immediately just decompress, and he's really concerned and confused about what happened. As Mo would actually hug him, saying that she's really glad he's okay, and she would be blushing very hard. Which is when Rebako and everyone would just start laughing, and Deku would just hug her back. Now, that is where I'm going to be leaving this part off of, guys. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Also, Darth Banana Man. I wrote down Whitebeard's powers in Darth Vader's suit. Now, I'm going to be changing Darth Vader's suit if it gets picked, because I will be putting it in the drawing. He won't have that problem Darth Vader has with his suit. It will be an actual functioning one, not the way Darth Vader's is. So it is going to be changed, but it is going to be his suit. Now, I'm going to be leaving this off of here, guys, so I hope you enjoyed the video.